with traffic 383, Julia Tango is taking the uh, runway 14, going to be an easterly departure, Tampa North traffic. Okay, departing Tampa North, we've got 3,500 feet here, should be good enough for the Cirrus. So we're going to go ahead and do a modified short field takeoff. Speed is alive. We're pushing on the right pedal. Caps is available. <laughs> Direct enter enter. Okay, here, five five four Charlie Bravo and six hundred heading two seven zero. North traffic, 383 Julian Tango, SR20 off uh, Tampa North. Hey, uh, 800 feet uh, departing the uh, area. Last call, Tampa North. Orlando approach, tiers 554, Charlie Bravo. You got the wrong frequency. <clears throat> Orlando approach, tiers 554, Charlie Bravo. This is 123.05, Ron Ferguson. Popka traffic, Archer connection, 521, turn a right cross, and one side of the Popka. <sighs> These guys, man. Okay, we are squawking. Popka traffic connection, 521, turn a right down, wind one side, 580, Popka. Okay, let's go. Okay, let's go. Okay, let's go. Okay, let's go. The final one we want to have, Tyson 80. I'm up. Left at about uh, ooh, two, two o'clock, straight up. <clears throat> On the way back, mixture full forward, external lights as required. Flight director on, and don't see a lot of traffic in the area today. Definitely the. Uh, the tops are definitely coming down now in the afternoon here in Florida. Land's heating up. Moisture gets up in the air. And the clouds start coming down closer to the ground. They're pretty typical for Florida pre-summertime. And we're well into spring in April. It's almost into summer. 
All right, let's go ahead and get the radio set up because it's going to happen really quick. Oh, I got a headwind this time. That's interesting. Okay. We're on the nav. We've got a little bit of a wind pushing at this, pushing us this way, so we're kind of crabbing into the wind. It's five knot. Nothing. Nothing major. Engine temperatures look good. Go ahead and cut the fuel back a little bit here. Okay, we don't need that much gas. Oh boy. Maybe we do. Getting hot quick. Okay, let's keep it cool. Let's keep it cool. Cut it back to 75%. We just don't need that much power to maintain this forward speed. There we go. Okay. Pretty good fuel flow. Let's take a look at the map. Ooh, got somebody in front of us. Okay, so a little more on my um, on my scenario. It's been uh, four and a half years on this journey. I can already see Lake Monroe in front of me. Been four and a half years on this journey, and um, you know I've kind of been in and out of the airplane over the last four and a half years. I've actually owned three aircraft in that time frame. First one was a really fun 1970 Cherokee 180 uh, that I did a lot of flight training in. Learned a lot of my basic maneuvers in that plane. It was in a flight school and um, Oh, one day when, it was, when they were doing the annual on the plane, the uh, mechanic noticed a problem with the right landing gear. Evidently, one of those students had dropped that thing from about 10 feet in the air and jammed the gear up into the right wing. So the plane was totaled, got the insurance money for it, but didn't, didn't really pay for what I had into it. Um, which really sucked, because that, that was a lot of fun. I could see myself flying that plane for a while and eventually, you know, selling it on to somebody else and then probably using that money to buy the Cirrus. Um, after that, I bought another 150, just to tool around in, a Cessna 150. Flew that for a real short period of time, sold that off, and decided no more planes in flight schools. I'm going to buy my own plane for myself. So, so, I'll free dispatch. so here I am in uh, oh, 48. There we go. 48 nautical miles to my destination. Um, so here I am now, finally having learned. I'm in the Cirrus. I love this airplane. I mean, really, this is what makes it nice, right? If I didn't have that autopilot, how could I ever do what I'm doing right now? Which is really good situational awareness. I got a lot of eyesight outside the airplane most of the time. And yet, it's still in control. I can still monitor what's going on up here and, and aviate, navigate, and communicate. So it's a great, it's a great, uh, great plane, great product. And... Uh, it's just a lot of fun. Anyway, here I am um, in the Cirrus. I'm kind of getting, kind of getting to the point where I, I'm hoping for maybe <laughs> an SR-22 someday. Because it'd be nice if we could get away from all this. I'm going to wait till the, till I get my instrument rating anyway. Before I do that, there's no use in doing it. I can get my instrument. Same instruments here. I might have to go to the Garmin in a newer 22, but get my instrument in this and then maybe 
move on to something faster than the 20. But I'll tell you what, I'll, this has been a great plane. Berlin White Archer Connection 521 over Lake Apopka, 2500 feet, 270 slow flight. Great training Apopka. plane. Just a quick flight there and back today. Good practice for me. Made a dynamite landing into uh, Tampa North on a relatively short runway, well, not real short, 3,500 feet, plenty of room for the Cirrus. Um, and and landing-wise, I had all kinds of room. Where is he? I see him on my uh, Skywatch, but I don't see him visually. Let's go ahead and switch our tanks. Yeah, see traffic. Blue tail, left Skyhawk. One one three up a kilo, three miles east. All right, right about three miles to him. Like Aspie, thousand feet below ground left. Like Aspie. Let's go ahead and make our call. Six four seventy. Thank you. Ready to contact. Three miles south northeast of Sanford. Orlando approach, 383 Julia Tango, Cirrus SR-20 over the uh, east side of Lake Apopka, inbound for Sanford, we have Papa. Number 383 Julia Tango, land approach, good afternoon, squad 0370. 03703, Joe Tango. Steve. Okay, I'm going on Orlando approach because Sanford's class Charlie, so we won't get a squat code. Now he's gonna look for me. A lot of heat coming up. Number 700, cross girl blue at 2000, cleared eye left, somewhere down our right approach. All right, uh, All right so let's start going down. Blue at uh, 2000, cleared uh, ILF 9 right approach, test system 94790. North 383, Julius, can you contact? Uh, let's see about uh, one, three miles northwest of Leesburg, and you're looking for the Jessup arrival into Sanford? Yeah, just arrival or going on going to nine, right? We can dig straight in if you want to do that too. Number three, three, Julius. Think be behind some slower traffic. There, just proceed via the Jessup or remain outside the Bravo. Okay, proceed to the Jessup, and we'll stay outside the Bravo. Three, Julius. Tango. That was nine seven zero. I've got a request, sir. Oh, that was uh, unreadable. There, say it again. It was 94790, sir. I'd like to make a request and amend that. We're going to do this to a full stop. I'm going to chase down Juliet Tango that's coming in behind us. Okay, 790, this is a full stop. Still clear approach. And contact Sanford Tower on a 120.3. Well, 120.3, thank you, sir. Appreciate your time. 94790. That's all. Have a nice day. Connection 470. We have what's called the Jessup in the Monroe arrival. It's falling at 1,500 feet. The, air Bravo, clear, direct Montana. the airport is situated between two lakes, Lake Jessup, Lake Monroe. So you got the Jessup arrival, Monroe arrival. Jessup is the south inbound arrival. Monroe is the north inbound arrival. So we essentially make a beeline for a bridge, which you can see right out there. Maybe not so well on the, on the GoPro. But straight out there, we just make a beeline for that bridge and come. Uh, Bravo contact, land approach now on a 1 to 2, 4.8, please. And then we're just going to come straight in on that bridge. 24 right, we'll watch Bravo call. Have and that is the proper That's procedure. Only for, uh, 80. Sanford Tower 383, Juliet Tango on the Jessup arrival inbound for spot 8. 383, Juliet Tango, Sanford Tower, Roger, you can fly direct to the base for runway 9 or right, mm -hmm. runway 9 or right, clear to land. You're following a uh, Cessna, I'm 2 mile off. Okay, we'll fly direct to base for 9 right 3 Julia Tango. We have pop-up, by the way. Roger. Now it's just a matter of steering the autopilot toward the threshold at 9 right. It's going to be a really fun ride. Really fun. plane's really trying hard to hold the... Hold the uh, heading. I got a reference point out there. I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's a there's a water tower right about that area. That's sort of my reference coming in from this side. Start aiming down. 
Let's get in the traffic pattern right away. Want to get the pattern altitude. It's going to be bumpy all the way down. Uh, Man 4 7 9 0 Sierra 3 sir. 7 9 zero, Roger, right at Sierra 3 the ramp with me. Have a good day. It's Sierra 3 the ramp with you, thanks. All right, we can go ahead and turn that autopilot off. 218, walk out to the recycle transponder. Below 120, we can put in our first flaps. And then let's just pitch for 100. Five hundred. That one too terribly bad. We'll Enjoy just thing. If you can make it, you can turn right at Sierra Three. The ramp with me. Right at Sierra Three. Stay with you, Three Julie Tangum. a nice flight, a little bumpy today, but uh, not too terribly bad. Um, good good experience getting in and out of Class Charlie. Uh, did, didn't have to mess with Tampa because I stayed underneath the Bravo in Tampa. So, had a pretty good, uh, pretty good learning process with that. Plane seems to be good. There is a crackle on my number, number two radio. I don't know why. Taxiway Bravo 2 closed. No, that's okay. Taxiway Bravo between Taxiway Kilo and Spot 11 closed. Seems pretty good now. Ooh. Somebody's blocking the ramp. Somebody's blocking my way in. All right. Let's see here. 
aren't supposed to park in the middle of the of the ramps like that. Let's see if I can get in. Oh, that's why it's Vern. <laughs> okay, I'm like, who the hell is in that Cessna? It's Vern and Dr. Bob. I wonder why my hangar was open. Thirty-three. In case five, on fifteen hundred feet, and just a arrival request for stop.